should be live in a second. Let me, um, y'all, if y'all could hear me, type in chat. I'm just gonna flip the video. Praise the Lord. But yeah, what is up, guys? It is Jay from Forever Blessed Ministries. Praise the Lord for what God is doing. But yeah, we'll get straight into it. I'm just trying to do something real quick. Praise the Lord. Okay, how do I do this? Um, oh, but yeah, I'm right here, guys. Just give me a second. If y'all could hear me spam in chat, this is going to be a word that many of you need to hear. In the name of Jesus, we'll see it if it's you. Okay, it's good. Y'all can see me. Okay. I'm just going to flip it. I like to mirror the camera for some reason. I'm just used to the mirror. So, yeah, I'm going to mirror it, and then we'll get straight into the stream. But, yeah, praise the Lord. Praise God for what he's doing. Amen. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to... Okay, there we go. Dun, dun. That's going... Flip vertical. Okay, I know what to do. My bad. Um, okay, I'm about to do it. Transform. Flip vertical. Oh, wrong way. My bad. Saints of God, forgive me. Forgive me. I haven't streamed in a minute, so I'm kind of messing up. I'm kind of upside down, but bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Uh, okay. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to fix this. We're going to fix this, saints. Pray for me. Everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. Oh, we fixed it. Okay. Last one. No, that was the wrong way. Okay. I'm trying to... Uh, there we go. There we go, saints. Okay. We're going to start right now. Praise the Lord. Y'all, y'all, y'all see I like the... I like to mirror the screen, you know, but... It is Jay from Forever Blessed Ministries. Let me put this on. But yeah, this is gonna be a, a ream of word. Can y'all hear me good? Is the mic, let me let me do a mic check. A mic check. Jesus name. Oh wait, let me do a mic check. Mic check. Okay, let me make sure that I have the thing connected to my microphone. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay, we should be good. We'll start. We'll start right now. So we'll get into prayer. If you guys are joining in, make sure to comment where you're joining in from in the name of Jesus Christ. But yeah, praise the Lord. But I don't know why it's like that. But yeah, the warfare always happens before the success. Just like how this light, just like how this live stream is titled, it's, you know, the testing before the blessing. How many of you are going through a testing season just by a show of hands in chat. I'm reading the chat. Praise the Lord. How many of you are going through a testing season? You're going through warfare. Even to start this stream, you see, you see what the devil is trying to do? Just to even get this broadcast started. See, nothing is perfect. In a, in a perfect world, it would just be like boop, boop, click two buttons and, and we're good. But 
That's not how this world works. We live in a fallen world, saints of God. That's why we need to have patience. There's some people, they probably clicked off because it's like, man, why is it not perfect? Why doesn't the live stream start at 4.30? Guys, I'm a perfectionist, but we cannot do anything without Jesus Christ. We need his grace. I couldn't even start this. I can't even breathe without Jesus. Someone comment, I need Jesus because we need him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we'll get straight into this live. Everyone comment where you're from and we'll get into prayer and then we'll get straight into it in Jesus' name. Amen. But I'm reading the chat. So I see Denver, Colorado. Praise the Lord. Los Angeles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone comment. USA, New Jersey, England, England, Germany. Praise the Lord. So we got people from all over the globe. India. Wow. Praise the Lord. God is going to move powerfully. Portland. Houston, California, California, Belgium, West Virginia, Syracuse, Netherlands, Australia, Sweden, Texas, India, Mass, oh, hallelujah, Sweden, Nebraska, Nigeria. Wow, we got Nigerians, New Orleans, praise the Lord. But yeah, we'll get straight into it, guys. I'm not going to waste no time. I know many of you, you're ready for this Rima word, so... Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would move powerfully, Lord, that you would deliver a word in due time and season, Lord God, that you would feed your people according to their hunger, Lord God. For, Lord, your people are desperate for truth. They're, they're seeking you, Lord. Some feel discouraged. Some feel like giving up, Lord. But I pray that this word would quicken their spirit, Lord God, that they would walk in the promises of God, Lord. For your word says that if we faint not in due time and season, we shall reap. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord, but we're going to get straight into it. By show of hands, how many of you have been feeling the effects of the warfare? You've been feeling the, the pressure that's going on in the realm of the spirit. I'm going to read the comments. I'm just going to talk with you guys. I don't have any notes, you know, but the Holy Spirit quickened my spirit to come on to encourage you because... Many of you here, you're going through warfare. You feel like giving up. You're on the verge of breakthrough. The devil doesn't want you to know that, that you're about to reach the biggest harvest of your life if you faint not. Hallelujah. So there's a lot of people here that are feeling discouraged. You're feeling like the enemy's coming with pressure. But this is one thing that the Holy Spirit has shown me. Jesus, before he started his ministry, he was tempted with three things. You know, the lust of the flesh, the, the spirit of the world and the pride of life. All these things, Satan's like, you know what? Turn these stones into loaves of bread. Same thing, he said, fall down and worship me. Fall down and worship me and I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. And I'm not saying it in order, but the last one, this isn't in order at all. He said, jump off, you know, jump off, that the angels will rescue you if, you if you jump off. And there's some people here, the devil's telling you just give up, you know, just, just rest in God. But guys, this is not time for sleeping. The, the first fruit of your labor is about to manifest, but the temptation for the enemy is for you to get comfortable. That's what he wants you to do. But we cannot get comfortable. We are living in a time and a season where you're going to see the fruit of your labor. You're going to see that breakthrough. I don't know, someone here, you've been praying for a promotion. You've been praying for a financial breakthrough. You've been praying for many things, but the Lord is saying, I heard, but I need you to endure because we are in a time that is so critical. God is saying, suffer well. God is saying, wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. He will deliver you. He will answer your cry, but you have to be patient. And one thing the Lord has been pruning me is um, God has been really speaking to me that this is a season for us to get our house in order. You know, God, if he looks at your house, you know, I'm in my apartment right now. Let's say God walks in your house and it's dirty. You're not going to want Jesus to enter dirty house. You're going to start cleaning up. But here's the good news. God doesn't want you to clean it up by your own strength. God is doing something in your life right now. He's cleaning up your house by his supernatural grace. And it might be painful because there are certain things that we took from Egypt. 
You know, it might be that addiction. It might be maybe you're, you're less patient. Maybe you're not praying as much as you should because you got comfortable. But the thing about God, God is not a God of non-order. God is a God of order and he likes things done in order. And the thing that the Holy Spirit has been showing me is this season we are entering is going to be a major season. But hold up, hallelujah. This is going to be a major season for harvest. And it's not just going to be a harvest for unbelievers, but in the church, there's going to be wheat and tares. There's going to be a great divide. And I want to encourage you to endure. But the real truth is you have to keep your heart pure. If there's wicked things in you, read Psalm 51 and say, Lord, purify my heart. Lord, give me a heart of flesh. Take away my heart of stone because I, I hear by the Holy Spirit, God has been speaking to many of you, but some of you, you've hardened your heart to his voice. The word of God says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. You know, the crazy thing, God has been pressuring on me many things to start doing and to stop doing. We're in that season, saints of God. There's many things that the Lord has been asking you to start doing and stop doing. And you're asking the Lord, Lord, why am I having anxiety? Why am I having suicidal thoughts? Do what the Lord is calling you to do. It might be fast more. It might be pray more. It might be stop sinning. You know, when you sin, it opens up doors for demons. But that's why we have to repent. The word of God says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And... This is encouragement for many of you that feel like you're, you're at the verge of breakthrough, but you can't get there quite. I'll tell you this by the Holy Spirit. Hear me by the Holy Spirit. There's some of you, you're at the verge of breakthrough, but there's usually a Goliath at the edge of breakthrough that wants to hinder and make you repeat. Um, I was actually playing basketball this month you know, for some reason, the, the Holy Spirit's been urging on me to start working out. And there's this game called All Around the World. By a show of hands, how many of you that have ever played basketball know the game? It's called All Around the World. Basically, you get two chances to make a, a free throw. And if you miss the shot in that specific place, you have to go back to square one. That's what All Around the World is. And this is very profound because this is what the Holy Spirit was telling me. This is what the walk with God is. That the enemy's ultimate goal is to make you do all this labor and set you back to square one. In, in the game of all around the road, you could make every shot, but if you miss the last shot, and I'm telling you, making shots in, in this game is not easy. But if you miss the shots, you have to go back to square one. You have to repeat. And that's what makes the game so interesting. It's the same thing with this walk with Christ. The enemy wants you to fast, do a three-day fast, and then set you back to square one. He wants to make you do all these things and then set you back to square one. And many of you are feeling discouraged because you feel like, man, every time around this year, every time around April, you get into a car accident. Every time around this year, something bad happens, a relationship fails, or a promise isn't fulfilled. But here's the thing. The Holy Spirit has given you the strength. He's given you the tools to press through. God has given you every thing you need to overcome Goliath, the Goliath in your life that wants to set you back to square one. And I could give you that weak preaching like, you know what? Jesus loves you. He's going to get you through it. But I want to tell you, the, the, the word of God says the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. If you don't want to go through the same cycle, the, the, the same repeating around every time around April you get depressed or you, you go through a, a traumatic thing, you have to ask yourself, am I going to pick up my cross? Because the word of God says that this race is narrow. You know, a lot of pastors, they're not preaching the narrow way because they want everyone to feel included. But I'm here to tell you to quicken your spirit, to be encouraged, not to be discouraged, because I'm here to tell you the truth because I want you to succeed. But if I give you like, imagine in, in college, right? You're, you're a senior and you've been failing all your tests. And I'm telling you, you know what? Even though you're failing all your tests and you're not studying and you're not doing your homework, God's got you. 
I would seem like a lunatic telling you that. I'm telling you, in the kingdom of God, there are tests that you have to pass. Many of the warfare that many of you are going through are not the devil attacking you. It's the test. God is testing your heart. But many of you, you've given up. You've given your heart to the things of this world. God is saying, let go of the world and let me take control. I want every area of your life. You know, there was a time where I was starting not to backslide, but I was starting to get comfortable. You know, God was calling me, okay, I want you to preach. I want you to wait on me well. But I'm thinking, I'm like, no, I would rather just move. I want to do, I want to embark on a adventure. I want to preach and travel here and do this and that. But I want to tell you that you cannot do that without the strength of the Lord, without the anointing, without his spirit, but you have to wait on him. And the Holy Spirit has been impressing on me that many of you, you're growing weary in the waiting season. You are in a waiting season and God is saying, just hold on, continue to pray. I'm testing you. I see you. I remember there was a time this was earlier in my walk. I was backsliding. I'm like, you know what? Too much warfare, too much sexual dreams, too much sleep paralysis, too many night attacks. I'm done with this walk. And I remember going to my brother's fraternity party. And as I was backsliding, I remember I was high at a party. And I, I have spiritual gifts where I'm able to see into the realm of the spirit. And when I was backsliding, God opened my eyes and there was a poster on the wall and this was not in the physical realm. This was in the spiritual realm, but God allowed me to see it. It was a poster of a globe and two eyes watching. And this is what it said. It said, God is always watching. So there's some of you here. You think that you have God fooled. You think that you could run away from God. Even for the people that are here, you're not necessarily backsliding, but you're avoiding doing what the Lord has called you to do. You think that you're fooling God. You're telling God, God, another week. Or God, let me just... Uh, look, just give me more time. You, you think you're fooling God. There's a, a, a deposit in heaven that is waiting for you, but God is saying now is the time. I don't know who, who needs to hear this. Hallelujah. Everyone in chat, if you're enjoying this, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm preaching right now by the Holy Spirit. There's some of you that are watching. You've been, you've been avoiding the calling of God. You think that you're fooling God. You know, you're living comfortably, you're going to work, you're going to school, maybe you're, you're just relaxing, playing the video games, you're distracting yourself. When heaven is calling on your heart and you're discouraged because you know that there's the calling, but you have to step up to the plate. And it's hard. It's, the calling of God is hard, but it is so worth it because when you step into purpose, discouragement has no order in your life. Here, cat. I don't know who needs to hear that. Let me repeat it. Write this in your heart. When you step into purpose, discouragement has no place in your heart. Because how many of you have ever been in a relationship, you know, and you were in the talking stage and you fell in love? You're like, man, this, this is my husband. This is my wife. This is my girl. This is my God. When you're passionate about pursuing someone, you're not going to get discouragement. You're not going to ask yourself, is this the one? Especially when you're in that beginning stage, all you're thinking about is that person. That's the same thing with God. That is the constant state that God wants his people. God wants us to be infatuated with him. He doesn't just want us to, to think about him on a Sunday. God wants us to be continually thinking about him because that's how he thinks about us. God is, the word of God says, he knows the plans for us to prosper us. God is thinking all the thoughts God has for you is good. God isn't looking at you right now and being like, oh man, they failed me. You know, they're backsliding. They're not praying. God is like, I just want them to come home. I want them to seek me. I want to fill them with living water. I remember there was a point in my walk where I was tired of the warfare. And this is what the word of God says. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I was going to gluttony. I was going to food. Every time I was uncomfortable or stressed out, I'm like, you know, I just need another snack. I need another this. And I was sinning against God because the thing about it was God wasn't my comfort. I didn't make the Holy Spirit my comfort. There's some of you here, you're like, this live isn't for me. I'm not backsliding, but you have turned away from your first love because you haven't remembered your first love, the taste of the living water. You remember when you first got saved? 
that sweet presence, that sweet fragrance, feeling like a child, the rivers of joy. And, and all you wanted to do is spend time with God. You want to get lost in his presence. But I'm here to tell you, God is calling his people back to that place. The reason why many of you are discouraged because you have lost that place. You are losing yourself in the things of this world. I remember um, there's a temptation for a lot of men for some reason. You know, I don't know how many of you notice this, but a lot of men make their car their profile pic. You know, there's a lot of men that do that. I'm calling out the men. There's a lot of women too. They make their beauty their profile pic but they lose themselves in the world. They have made themselves, they have made their car, they have made their job an idol, you know? But we need to lose ourselves in God. We need to lose ourselves in Jesus Christ. Some of you, you're entangling yourself in the things of this world. The word of God says a good soldier doesn't get entangled in civilian pursuits. There's some of you here right now, you have went to the things of this world and you're getting lost in it. It's consuming your identity. You know, every time you wake up, you think about it. You can't even pray because you're thinking about that one idol. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying, lay those idols down. There's some of you here by the Holy Spirit. You have given up. You have went back to the marijuana. You went back to the alcohol because you're trying to fill something that only God could fill. But I'm telling you, it's going to be hard, but you have to get lost in it. You have to get lost in the things of God. I remember there was a time where I was praying seven hours a day. I'm like, what happened? You know? And now I hear the Holy Spirit saying, get lost in me. This is a time to lose yourself in Christ. And what I mean by lose yourself is not go crazy in, in prayer and go crazy in fasting, but lose yourself as in remember your first love. Remember the first time you encountered God and you're like, God, I'm ready to leave everything. God, if your presence is this real and you're real, I'm ready to surrender. Because many of you have forgot that. You have forgotten your first love. But I hear the Lord saying, it is time. There's a fresh, hallelujah, I'm about to pray for many of you. There's a fresh anointing, a fresh refreshment that God wants to pour upon you right now. Because you have forgot it. Every time you feel discouraged, you feel like food will comfort you. You feel like just driving fast or whatever it is. I, I know this road is weird. We have different outlets of escaping the real reality that we all need Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm going to pray for the many people here. I'm, I'm reading the chat, but I just want to do a call, an altar call for the people that have been feeling that way. I described you. If, if, I, if I'm describing you as I'm preaching and you feel convicted, you feel the Holy Spirit say this word is for me. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray for you guys. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And everyone, make sure that you like this live. Make sure you like the live. But yeah, everyone, if you feel like this word is for you, comment. And I'm going to pray for you. And the Holy Spirit is going to pour a fresh anointing upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people saying this word is for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But I'm going to pray for you. Just say, for those that have been comfortable, not necessarily living in sin, but comfortable, you've been avoiding the calling of God. You've been avoiding going deeper. You've been stagnant. You've been frustrated and delayed. Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent for being comfortable. Lord, I repent for not leaning on your strength. Lord Jesus, remind me of my first love and help me to lose myself, my identity in this world, to you. Jesus, I surrender to you. Help me walk into my full potential, the full capacity of my destiny. Lord Jesus, help me to walk in the woman or the man that you created me to be. Lord Jesus, Help me to deny myself 
to pick up my cross and to follow you daily. Jesus, I need you and I surrender myself to you and I repent of my sins, known and unknown, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I'm gonna pray for you guys, hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Spirit right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for my brother and sister who is watching, who has felt like they have fallen into complacency, into stagnancy. They've been feeling discouraged. They feel like they're in a tunnel, that there's no way out, that they've been doing the same routine day after day. They feel purposeless. They feel like the enemy has been wearing them out, Lord God. Right now, I command that discouragement to break off their life in Jesus' name. And I pray the Holy Spirit would come and anoint them afresh, Lord, that they would have a burning desire to seek the things of God over the things of this world, to seek you like never before, Lord God, to pass the test, to not let the enemy set them back to square one, Lord God. But I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would move upon them right now, upon their heart, Lord God, the areas of their heart that have been hardened to you, to your voice, Lord. I pray for a revival. I pray for a softening in their heart that they would hear the voice of God. I hear the Holy Spirit saying that some of you haven't heard the voice of God in a while. You've been so filled with distractions, with the things of this world. You have neglected the voice of God. You're not even hearing God anymore. You're on YouTube trying to fill a void of entertainment. Okay, what is next? How can I hear from God? What is God doing in this season? Well, I'm here to tell you there's a fresh anointing that's about to come upon you that when you get into the secret place, close your eyes and the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. He's going to give you clear instructions. So, Lord, I pray that this word would go forth, Lord, for your word says the word of God will never return void. So I pray the word would go forth in Jesus name and that you would break any pride, any rebellion, any stubbornness to your voice. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to the viewer, that you would speak to my brother, that you would speak to my sister clearly, Lord God. And I command that heaviness, that burden that has been upon them to lift off in Jesus' name. For, for the, the Lord is saying that his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I want everyone here to say, I let go of every heavy burden. I let go of every heavy burden. And I take the easy yoke and the light burden of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you prayed that, everyone in chat say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm reading the chat. Everyone in chat say amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God for what he's doing. The Holy Spirit has been upon me to hopefully bring restoration. God put this on my heart because, you know, there is a time and a season for everything like the word of God says in the book of Ecclesiastes. I want to address this because this is a serious issue. There's many people that are speaking for God, but they're speaking from God. I know many of you here, you watch my YouTube, you know that I'm authorized by the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you right now, there's many people on YouTube that you're listening to that are not authorized. They're not anointed by God. They just speak because they feel like they want to be someone influential, but it's not coming from God. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you see someone who's uploading every day, God told me this, God told me that, the, your blessing is coming, your breakthrough is coming. Some of these people, guys, you need to ask, what is their motive? Because I'm telling you, it took a whole month of like wilderness for me, for me to be able to, to, to be authorized to come on live to give this word. Because... I'm not looking to be relevant. I'm looking to be obedient. Everyone comment obedience over relevancy. Because there's some people, they're literally in, they're, they're imparting the wrong spirit with their false words. God did not speak to some of these people. I don't know who needs to hear this. But the Holy Spirit told me that there is a great harvest. These are words straight from the throne room of God. There is a great harvest that is coming. I'm telling you. Uh, and this might seem generic, but there's a harvest that is coming for those who will endure because God is testing his people. There's warfare that you're going through 
It's not all the devil. God is testing your heart. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. This was straight out of the secret place. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Hallelujah. This is a, a deep word. Hallelujah. God said this. There's unveiling that's happening right now. An unmasking of spiritual realities. And God said that he's cleaning his house. Not just spiritually, but physically. He's cleaning his house. He, he wants you to be renewed. Guys, there are certain sins that I was doing in the beginning of this year. Minimal sins. Things that I didn't think were really necessarily sin. That God is saying, I'm cleaning my house. I, I let you get away with this, my son and my daughter, for a season, but no more. I remember even the temptation to drive fast. How many of you like to drive fast? Maybe you like going 80 in a, in a 60 sometimes. The Lord has been telling me like, son, you need to get it in order. Although it's not necessarily a sin that leads to death, this is something that I want to perfect in you. I don't want you to just be a Christian on camera, but even in your driving, I want you to be a Christian in your eating habits. There's some of you here, you've been pigging out. You've been looking for, for pleasure. I made a video about this, but God is really cleaning his house. He wants to prune us so that we bear more fruit and it might be painful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But the Holy Spirit has been impressing upon me that God is, is cleaning his house. And there are certain things that if God were to give you it right now, it would destroy you. That's why you're going through that stretching, you know? Praise the Lord. Someone asked me, do you have a covering? No, I don't. I don't have a covering. Um, I have a pastor. I'm under a pastor. But um, if you guys didn't know this, my original spiritual covering was in New York. I'm not in New York anymore. So, you know, I'm covered by God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm just reading the chat. Someone said, can you pray deliverance for me? I'll pray a prayer of deliverance when the Holy Spirit leads me on, but I want you guys to do a fast. We're going to do a probably a three-day fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to do it a whole separate live, but I came on here to give this word. I want to encourage you. I hope many of you are encouraged by it. I hope the Holy Spirit. I see the witness in chat. Everyone, um, everyone gives salute to the witness. He, he's a powerful man of God. He, he's over here in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. He's, his ministry is growing because he's been obedient. There's some of you here that God wants to pour increase in your ministry, but you have to be obedient, especially seasons like this where the testing and the stretching and the turbulence is at an all-time high. You know, there's some people, they start their ministry and it never grows. They have 200, 1,000 subscribers, but they only get five views because they're diligent to be trendy. But when it comes to being obedient, God will not give them actual influence. There's many people on YouTube, they don't have real influence. You wanna know a secret? Influence does not come from men. It comes from the throne room of God. In the realm of the spirit, the reason why even there's 200 people here, because in the realm of the spirit, they know that, okay, this is an authorized man of God. But someone could have the same platform, 100,000 views, I mean 100,000 subscribers, but when they speak, there's no views because there's no authority. In the realm of the spirit, people are like, wait, like why does he have so much subscribers, but why is there only five people in here? Because there's no authority. You know, it's the same thing at a red light. Let's say... I was a cop, I would be able to run that red light. But as a civilian, I don't have the authority to run the red light. And that's why we have to be careful, saints of God, because there's many people on YouTube, they have the platform, they have the position, but they don't have the authority. They don't have the anointing. But hallelujah, praise the Lord. Someone said some of us can't fast. Everyone could fast. I'll tell you right now, everyone could fast. Even if it's eating before 6 a.m., do it. You know, you could eat in the morning when you wake up. Wake up at 5 a.m., eat, and then fast till 6 p.m. Everyone here could fast. Hallelujah. I'm telling you by the Holy Spirit.
The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. That's what the word of God says. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. If you want to make it in this walk, I'm, I'm just going to be straight up. If you want to make it in this walk, you have to be able to fast. You have to be able to pray. Because even what the Lord has shown me, the times that are coming are serious. They're going to be perilous times. There's going to be a lot of turbulence. I remember when I was praying the other day, I gave a prophetic word about something is coming that you need to know God. Like if you don't know God, you will not make it. Because even as someone who is rooted firm on God, the word of God says, take heed lest you fall. So I started to realize that we have to know when the Lord is speaking, what he's saying to his church. God is giving Easter eggs. He's giving secret revelations to his people because he wants us to be prepared. God is still speaking to his prophets. God is speaking to his people. But we've been deaf to the voice of God because we've been making our belly our God. We've been making the, the social media our God. We've been making all these things our gods, but we're not tapping in into the secret place to hear what the Lord is saying because I'm telling you, saints of God, and I'm not fear-mongering, something worse than COVID is coming. Something worse than... And someone commented, feeling really sleepy. That is a turbulence because... This is a thing that's happening. The church is on a threshing floor and there's a separation that's happening. The wheats are, are being separated to the right, the tares to the left. And, and just like the, the parable, there was a parable with 10 virgins. Five were foolish and five were wise. 10, right? How many of those people enter the kingdom of God? Five out of 10. That means that if we have a whole congregation, 50% of the church is going to be saved. The other 50 is going to go to hell. That is a sobering reality of this walk. Saints of God, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you have to keep your oil burning. You know, I, I remember that sleepy spirit was coming upon me, but I'm, I'm saying by the Holy Spirit, wake up, church. Don't allow the spirit of slumberness and poverty to eat up your harvest. You know, there needs to be a, a fire that's sparking in you. If God wants his people to be on fire, I don't know who needs to hear this. God wants his people to be on fire. Because serpents, serpents are attracted to weak vessels. Serpents, they like to twist the truth. If you're weak enough, to listen to the manipulation, to the enemy, the serpent will influence everything that you do for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But saints of God, I'm going to end the live in 23 minutes. Hallelujah. 23 minutes. But I'm going to answer some questions by the Holy Spirit. But if you guys enjoyed the live, I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be answering questions. If you guys enjoyed the live, everyone just give glory to God in the chat. Everyone give glory to God if you're enjoying this live. Praise the Lord. But yeah, hallelujah. We have 231. That's very good. Praise God. But yeah, everyone give glory to God. I want to see everyone. If you're watching this live, don't be a modern spirit. Don't be idle. Give glory to God in the chat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone here, I want to see all 230 people give glory. If you haven't liked the live, like the live, because it's all glory to Jesus. Even this word, this is a rema word straight from the throne room of God. Praise the Lord. But... The biggest thing that God is testing in the hearts of his people is idols. I'm telling you, there is a time where there is a strong temptation to go to idols. And I'm someone who is dead to this world. But the temptation to put things over God, even subtle things, checking social media, looking for comfort, eating food over fasting. You know, these things are idols. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
we're gonna need some moderators, guys, because there's some people in chat that are really, I'm gonna add some of my members. Who here has been a member for more than five months? If you've been a member for more than five months, I'm gonna confirm with your picture and I'm gonna make you a moderator. Praise the Lord, where are my members? Let me um do members only, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All my members, I'm gonna put the thing, the members only. The chat should be members only. All my members speak. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make people talk. I just want my members to talk so I can add some mods. Um, voice crying in the wilderness will be a moderator. Praise the Lord. Um, okay, Bath just got a mod. Okay, I think we only have one member in here. Guys, if you want to become a member, you get perks in the future too. We'll do perks like moderators and, and stuff, but I'm going to take off members only mode. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But yeah, we have a moderator. So, okay, members only is off. Praise the Lord. We have a moderator. So if you're a moderator, I just added you a moderator voice crying in the wilderness. You've been faithful. So if you see any foolishness, you know what to do, ban them. Um, someone said, Jay, why did, did you stop working out? Why did you stop? See, that's the spirit of accusation. Whoever said I stopped working out? It, it, that's how I could tell you didn't watch my newest video. I said I started going back to the gym, you know, but I'm still in consecration. But that's the thing about the church. Church, we have to stop partnering with the accuser. The word of God says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. I see so many comments where people, they just assume things like, hey, Jay, why, why did you do this? Hey, Jay, like, you know, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. But yeah, yeah. Watch my newest video. Okay, Carol, I'm going to make Carol a moderator. You've been a member for a while. I'm going to make you a, a moderator, Carol. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But yeah, guys, the Holy Spirit has been impressing on me. Working out is important. I started working out. Um, as you can see, I've been... You know, but I got a glory not in the flesh. You know, the word of God says, as he increases, I must decrease. So, you know, it's good to have a balance. You know, there was a time where I was deep in consecration. I couldn't even lift up a gym if, if my life depended on it. I couldn't go to the gym. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I'm reading the comments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm still reading. Someone said, what's your take on anxiety? I believe anxiety is inevitable when you're not walking in the spirit. Because the thing about it, the word of God says in Ephesians 6, 12, put on the full armor of God. Why does the word of God say put on the full armor of God? Because we are at war, saints. Every time you leave your house, and you haven't prayed, you haven't put on the full armor of God, you are in danger. Every time you close your eyes and you didn't put on the full armor of God, you didn't inquire of the Lord, you are in danger. Because the angels of the Lord, they're waiting for command. You know, they're waiting for the word of God to be spoken. But if you're speaking, you're listening to secular music, you're, you're rapping to your favorite rappers and you're not inquiring of the Lord, you're invoking demons to, to, to be with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone said, you've been feeling that you want to touch from the Lord, increase your faith. Someone said, why won't God reveal himself to you? You feel so invisible. So God has revealed himself to all of us through his word, right? But this is what the word of God says. If you read your Bible, it says, those who seek him diligently. If you seek God diligently, you will find him. What does it mean to seek God diligently? It means, okay, God, I'm going on a three-day fast. You do the three-day fast. God didn't speak to you. Here's the thing. Here's the problem with many Christians. When you don't hear from God, you give up. And you say, God, I, I did everything. But God is saying, did you keep going? 
Sometimes God won't speak to stretch you. God will be like, I want you to keep seeking me. You did a three-day fast. Continue to seek me. Live a lifestyle of fasting. Live a lifestyle of consecration. I remember um, recently, there was a time where I wasn't hearing the voice of God. And I'm thinking, I'm like, I didn't do anything wrong. I know I'm living holy. I know I'm living right. But I have such a firm foundation in the word of God. I know that the, according to the word of God, it says that God will never leave nor forsake me. Therefore, if God is quiet, this is a test. I need to keep seeking him. And after I kept seeking him, he spoke. Praise the Lord. But I'm going to do a couple more questions. I want to ask a couple. I want to do a couple more questions. Praise the Lord. Someone said, Jay, can you help me? overcome spiritual laziness and procrastination you feel like tired so with that i can't do this walk for you my brother i cannot help you overcome the flesh cuz the flesh is wicked you know do you want me to 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 take a plane ticket and go to your house and and blow a whistle every time you're lazy i can't do that you know the word of god says pick up your cross so there's a cross that you have to pick up you might feel lazy. You might feel tired. When Jesus was put on that cross, you, you think that he felt like going on that cross? That's why we have to have discipline. We need discipline. The answer to your question is discipline. It isn't, Jay, I need you. I need your anointing. I need this. The answer is discipline. Hallelujah. But I'm going to keep answering questions. Someone said, Jay, please pray for Joshua. Hallelujah. I don't know what Joshua needs prayer for. Sorry I didn't see your comment if Joshua was in the chat. But Father, we pray for Joshua, Lord. I just pray and I intercede on his behalf that your Holy Spirit would move upon him, Lord God, that you would break every chain of affliction in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Someone said, where is the fast? I mean, when is the fast? So the fast is going to be sometime from either April or mid of May, April or May, late April or May. We're going to do a fast. I'm going to be doing deliverance. Deliverance isn't really like where my anointing. I just do it to fulfill the great commission. But this is what the Holy Spirit has impressed on me for my calling. And I want to explain this because many of you here, you're inspired because you see me walking in the will of God. But there's some of you here that are watching. You want to walk into your calling, but you have to know your grace. Part of your calling is knowing your grace. If God has called you to be a preacher, then make sure that the, in the school of the Spirit, the things that you're doing are related to preaching. If my calling is to be an evangelist and to be a prophet, I'm not going to be doing, you know, worship lessons and trying to teach a worship class and trying to interpret, you know, how to break you know, demonic strongholds of generational curses and all this stuff, you know, that's not my grace. But all, everyone here, you know, there's a burden, a light burden, an easy burden that God wants you to pick up. You know, the biggest way to know your calling in the area where God has graced you in is what dreams are you having? pertaining to your walk with Christ? Are you having dreams of you preaching? Are you having dreams of you casting out demons? I know a brother, he was called into the deliverance ministry at a very young age. He was having dreams of people manifesting and he was casting out demons. For me, when I first started my walk, I was having dreams of me preaching. Everything I'm doing now, I, I had visions earlier in my walk. And now I'm walking in the manifestation of my calling but yet again, there's a temptation to do other things. There's a temptation. Okay, maybe I should be in deliverance ministry. Guys, I could cast out demons, but am I called to deliverance ministry? No. But the Great Commission is to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to, to, you know, to fulfill the Great Commission, to preach the gospel to all nations. So I'm going to do it regardless. But am I grace in a way like demons are just running like, you know, like, oh, man, the son of man, how do you come? You, it's not like that for me. I'll tell you that. But there's many ministries I could recommend that are grace in the area of deliverance. They have a strong anointing for deliverance. Hallelujah. But for me, 
personally, I do deliverance. I do have a strong anointing for deliverance, but my main goal is to exhort, to teach, to prophesy, and to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But if everyone is enjoying the live, comment, comment, um, Jesus is King if you're enjoying the live. Because there's 219 people here, but you guys are being silent. I want an active church, guys. Come on. Praise the Lord. I want an active church. Everyone comment, Jesus is King. Everyone, if you're watching 230 people, because I'm giving spiritual nuggets, this stuff is going to help you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm reading the chat. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. It's good to see that you guys are engaging because the agenda with social media, there's such a agenda to take your attention span. How many of you have been getting caught up in reels and 60 second videos and be transparent. If that's you, you've been getting caught up. Like you feel like your attention span is getting attacked. Comment a one in chat. I'm going to pray to break that off your life. Cause I was at a point like where there was a season in my life. I couldn't stop scrolling. I kept scrolling reel after reel. And it started to turn into secular reels. Like, did you know this about Walmart? You know, there's some of you here that are, that are getting caught up in that. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's about to deliver you. There's many people that you've been getting caught up in this, but the Holy Spirit is going to deliver and restore your attention span. So just say, Lord Jesus, I repent right now. We'll, we'll come into agreement with this prayer with repentance. Hallelujah. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent for allowing distractions to enter into my life. Lord Jesus, right now I pray that you would heal and that you would deliver my attention span to focus on the things of God and not on the things of this world. And if you prayed that, everyone comment amen and I'm gonna pray for you. We're gonna break that, that attention and spirit of distraction Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But Lord Jesus, in your mighty name right now, I command every spirit of distraction to break off. And I pray and I decree and I declare that their attention span would be healed, Lord God, that they would be diligent in reading the word, diligent in praying, Lord God. Those distractions in the mind, those spirits of distraction, those ministering demons that come to steal the attention of the viewer, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you to be broken off their life in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit, that you would bring deliverance upon their life, oh God. Take us to Mount Zion, Lord God. Take us deeper in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, I remember there was a time, this was a couple months ago, where just social media was becoming such a crutch to my boredom. You know, there's some of you here, video after video, and it's like, man, like this is so boring. I'm in bondage to, to just my phone, to, to a video and it's not even giving me what I need. This, this video is talking about all these facts and theology and philosophical things, but it's not feeding my spirit, man. And this is why a lot of you love watching me because when I come here, I'm coming with a plate of manna. I'm coming with fresh meat. I'm not gonna come, you're not gonna see me post a video just off the flesh, just giving you philosophical information. My duty as a servant of God is to give you food, spiritual food that will help you in your everyday life. Praise the Lord. But there's some of you here, you need to unsubscribe from those channels, those channels that are feeding your, your knowledge. This is what the word of God says. It says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. You know, we need to stop yielding to foolishness. Hallelujah. But I'm going to answer more questions. We still got five more minutes. Sorry if I'm going on a tangent, but praise the Lord. I want to hear from someone new. Someone said, how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit or not? Do you need to be baptized? 
the way to know you have the Holy Spirit is, are you living holy? <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that. When the Holy Spirit came upon me, I was no longer a slave to porn. I was no longer a slave to, to sin. You know, that's how you know you have the Holy Spirit. And that isn't the end. The end goal isn't just to receive the Holy Spirit. I've seen people receive the Holy Spirit and a week later they were fornicating. You know, your goal should be to know Jesus Christ, to know his love, to know his purpose, his destiny for your life, and to pick up your cross and follow him daily. Because you could have the Holy Spirit. People might clip this and call this heresy, but you could have the Holy Spirit and still go to hell if you are not living holy. Man, we need those preachers in these last days. Because the ultimate goal in many evangelical ministries is say this prayer, receive Jesus. Yay, you're going to... That's not how it works. Jesus said... Those who do what I say are my disciples. And those who do not do what I say are children of the devil. You know? Hallelujah. And I feel the Holy Spirit strong because this isn't talked about, church. Praise the Lord. But I'm going to answer a couple more questions. How do you love Jesus more than your sin when you really love your sin? So if you love your sin more than Jesus, then you don't know Jesus. Because, you know, to know God, to love him is to fear him. You know, and there's, I'm not saying like being afraid of going to hell. See, a lot of us that follow Jesus, we're more afraid of the devil than God. But God wants us to have a healthy fear. Like God saved us, but God is a God of his word. God will do what he said. If you disobey the Lord and you live in sin and you love sin, you love the things of this world over God, there's a place in hell that you could spend for eternity without God. But may that not be your portion. I don't want to go to hell. I'm, there, there's an apostle, his name is Pagani. He always says this. He's like, I'm not going to hell for nobody. I don't want to go to hell for nobody. Everyone comment that in chat. I'm not going to hell. I don't care how good she looks. I don't care how good that beer, that alcohol, how good that blunt looks. I'm not going to hell for nobody. There is nothing in this world. There is no sin in this world that is better than the love of God than following Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone comment that. <laughs> I'm not going to hell for nobody. <laughs> Praise the Lord for nobody, for nobody. There's nothing, there's nothing in this world that will make me want to go to hell for. Nothing, nothing it's worth it. There's some of you right now in your contact, you have that, that sneaky link, you, you have that drug dealer, you need to change their contact information. I'm not going to hell for you. You might have, you might be the plug. I'm not going to hell for you. You might, you might be my sneaky link. You might be my booty call. I'm not going to hell for you. <laughs> I'm preaching right now, saints of God, but praise the Lord. We're approaching the end of this live. Hallelujah. If you guys want to see me go live more, comment in chat, comment a one in chat. If you want to see, I'm only going to be on live when the Holy Spirit leads me to, but comment a one in chat if you enjoy this live or you want to see more lives in the future. I'm going to make Devin a, a mod too. Shout out Devin. I've, I've seen you diligent on this live, on my lives and chat for a while. I just made you moderator. Praise the Lord. But if you guys are watching the replay, make sure to comment, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe if this blessed you. Um, I'm starting to answer Instagram DMs for some reason. The Holy Spirit has been sending people for a weird reason to message me. So if you guys on Instagram, you could DM me. I only respond to a few. I don't respond to everyone. But if the Holy Spirit leads me to respond, I'll respond. But praise God for what he's doing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all my members. Like I said, as this ministry is growing, we're going to be doing weekly Zoom calls or monthly Zoom calls. We're going to do a lot, guys. I'm, I'm young. I'm not going to make I'm young as an excuse because as much as given, as much as required, I want to steward the influence. I want to steward the ministry as best as I can, but I need a team. I've been 
praying for a team. I believe that in this breakthrough season, the Lord is going to send me a team that will work full time. I'm going to say this in chat because someone that's watching here might be moving to Texas. You might be hired in Jesus' name because the goal, the ultimate goal with Forever Blessed Ministry is to build the kingdom of God on earth, to advance the kingdom of God on earth. And I've been putting in work in the harvest, and I believe there, there's people out in this world that you want to be used. You want to, to be full-time ministry. You want them to just... And when that increase comes, I'm not going to disclose too much details because I know the enemy, he's going to try to intercept what God is going to do. But when the increase comes, there's going to be audition or applications that I'm going to be open to, to seeing who wants to join. Because I realize I'm called, but it would be way more effective if there's a team, people who are willing to serve, you know, not a Jezebel. You you could be a woman and join it or men, but if you guys are not living right, this opportunity is not for you. If you guys are not on fire and you, you don't have a, a good prayer life, I'm, I'm telling you, like, when this team is built, it's going to be a praying ministry. The ministry is going to be built on prayer, the word. We might street preach, but it's really going to be up, I'm telling you, by the grace of God, if it's the Lord's will. Hallelujah. But, you know, I, I have so much that the Holy Spirit's been downloading in me to do, you know, there, there's going to be major increase coming very soon. Just like how, you know, the Holy Spirit has been increasing this ministry. There's going to be a lot more. But I feel the Holy Spirit saying enough said. So if you guys enjoyed this live, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I love all of you. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. If you guys haven't seen my newest video, make sure to check it out. By the grace of God, let's advance the kingdom of God. Tomorrow I'll be preaching, guys. Tomorrow I'll be preaching, so keep me in prayer. I'll be in Austin, Texas. If you're in Austin, you could email me. You could message me. I'll pray about it because the reason why I don't like making the location public, you know, and the person might be watching this, but when I made the location public in, in another place, there was an ex-warlock that came. And it wasn't the fact that he was an ex-warlock, but it was the fact that he was backsliding and he came to evangelize with me, guys. If you are living in sin, don't come evangelize with me. That doesn't just put my assignment in danger, but you're saying you're Christian and you're going out and people, they could see your, your spiritual garments are dirty. You know, this walk is more than just picking up a microphone and preaching about Jesus. People of the road could tell if you're truly living that walk. I remember before I was a Christian, I would know, I would know who is really about it. That's why I hated Christians because I saw the hypocrisy in many. But unbelievers are not foolish. If you guys are not living holy, do not come. Do not message me, Jay. I want to preach with you. But make sure that you are living a obedient life. And if you are, you can message me. But I love all of you. By the grace of God, I'll be, praise the Lord, I'll be in Austin. Hallelujah. But I love everyone. I'm going to end the live. Shalom. In Jesus' name. Amen.